And if you've started a JSS app before, you've seen this screen. And what it tells you to do is it tells you to CD into the directory that it creates for you. It tells you to type JSS start. I actually think JSS start is probably a good path to go through for this presentation and get a good understanding of what JSS start actually does under the hood, because you're ultimately going to end up um, you know, responsible for creating the JSS start for your application. So um, first, I want to just talk about what JSS command does. And if you just type JSS in a, in a, in a project, you're going to get a listing of commands, and this is going to be up right at the top. So these are the built-in commands. and these are universal commands that you don't have to do anything for. These are free for you. So um, they're pretty cool. They have some nice descriptions for each one. But if you keep scrolling a little bit, you'll end up with a screen that looks like this. And you know, up at the top, we have JSS start, because this is the command I, I, that's first in my, my package.json. And what it's, what, what it's actually doing is it's parsing out the scripts that are in my package.json. And yeah, it's, uh, it's allowing us to really configure how all these commands actually work behind, behind the scenes. So what does JSS start, and what does it do by, you know, what does it do by itself? And the answer, it, it doesn't do a ton by itself. It uses this package, this npm package called npm run all, and it runs other commands. And npm run all allows you to run different commands in, in different modes. So the first command, the first type of command this runs is a serial command. And this will, this will first run this command, or any commands in there in serial before the parallel commands start. And we'll talk about why that's important in a second. Um, so after it runs that serial, serial command, it'll switch over to the parallel commands, and it'll run start svelte, start proxy, and start, uh, start watch components. So I just want to go through each one of these commands and just talk about their role in, in JSS start and how, and how you should think of them. So uh, the first, we'll start with the serial command. So this is bootstrap disconnected. And this is really responsible for building the configuration files which are then going to be imported into your web application. You know, this, this is actually responsible for telling your application how it's, how it's running. So you know, one of the files it, run, it builds is this um, configuration file. So it, you know, we're in, you know, it's, this is bootstrap disconnected, so it's configuring our application to run in disconnected mode. So um, it's configuring the API host to point at local hosts, and it's also configuring the GraphQL endpoint to also look at local hosts as well. And you have, you, have, you have full control over what actually goes into this, this, this configuration file. So, um, and it's also responsible for, for building, doing the first pass of the component factory. So it actually will discover all the different components that are in your, that are in your uh, web application and write this component factory to disk. So just to summarize, we, we've, written, we've now written two files to disk. So we've written the component factory and that configuration file. So those are, those are both present on disk. And this is important to run first because if we didn't, you know, if we had this as set as a parallel command, there might be some sort of race condition where this completes last or something like that. And we wouldn't really know how we were fully, you know, we can guarantee that we were configured in the right mode. So running this in, in you know, in parallel, in serial allows us to ensure it runs, it runs first. So this is the snippet from my web application. And we're really just importing these files into our, you know, our application, and we can just start using the values from them. So I'm importing the config file, and I can start configuring my GraphQL endpoint, and I can also set my component factory on my Sitecore context, and yeah, really start my application. So that was the serial command, and now we're gonna move on to the parallel commands. So we're, watch components is the first one. I think this is a good place to start here. And start watch components really just watches for changes in your component directory. So if you add a new component to your web application, uh, this command is responsible for watching that directory. And if you add it, it's gonna generate a new component factory mapping and write that to disk. Um, so it really, you know, it, yeah. So it also has the ability to trigger a reload of your, of your like, uh, development site if I don't know, a component is added during development. The next command is start proxy. And this is the disconnected layout service. So you know, start uh, JSS start is is disconnected development. So if you type uh, yeah, so the disconnect layout service allows you to really just mock out um, you know layout service data using code first data definitions. You know items uh, in here are, you know are just files on disk, and you can represent items in in YAML or JSON formats, and you can scaffold things like components, content, uh, dictionary items, 
can add media items, and then finally, most importantly, the routes. So, and basic example of what that, what that sort of looks like is this is a route component, and you can configure the different fields that are on this route, and then the placeholders as well. So you can scaffold JSS main, add all your different components to it, and configure the fields on those as well through these code first uh, item definitions. And you know, how, when you're implementing your, your web application, you're gonna have to create um, really a, a way for these directories to get read. You know, we have those folders is, is, that exist on disk, but we need things that actually read those directories and, and populate the disconnected layout service. So the answer to that is um, basically there's a, there's a handler JavaScript file for each one of those directories. And these are the same across every single one of the sample applications. Um, and yeah, each one of these is responsible for reading its own directory, with the exception of, of media files. This is sort of a special condition in disconnected mode and only things that are actually referenced by items get, get picked up there. So, um, and then these processors really look like this. So they first start by really defining, you know, what directory they read from. Um, and after it reads that directory, it then goes and converts those files that it's found on disk to a, sort of the disconnected representation of, of, a, of an item. And then it's responsible for adding it to a, the, this, what is called the manifest, which really powers uh, the disconnected layout service. So at this point, we've built out folders and we have these JavaScript handlers, which we've used from the sample applications to get started. But what actually runs those, you know, those handlers? How do we actually run these to actually populate our disconnected layout service? And if you take a look at actually the command that runs when start proxy runs, at the very bottom of this, at the bottom of this file, you'll see this call um, to uh, create default disconnected server. And what the JSS team did is they added, they, they created a special npm package just for disconnected layout servers. So we can reference that same npm package and we can import it into our project. And we don't have to write the actual, you know, JSON endpoint for disconnected layout service. We can, we can just reference this package and really just get started with it. And you can pass in all these different um, options to it. And what really happens behind the scenes is um, it creates a, a sort of a manifest manager. And then on that manager, um, it has, has some source, source files paths that it looks for. So just by naming your files and matching these patterns, this disconnected layout service is gonna pick up those, those files and it's gonna run them when, uh, when, it, when the disconnected layout service starts to populate the manifest. So, you know, this is a you know, NPM package that you can take and implement and add, you know, get started with disconnected layout service fairly quickly in your own application. So that's enough about setup. Let's talk about the web application now. And if you ever started a JSS application, you've seen this screen before. Um, I, I love this screen. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time looking at it. Um, in particular, this, this page. So um, the style guide page is really, it ex, you know, has examples of field usage across all JSS components. Each one of the sample applications has implemented this, this particular page. So as you're sort of going through your implementation of a client framework with, with PsychoJSS, like I think the end goal, or the, the goal should be to be like sort of feature parity with this. You should be able to really render this page out and have it function like the, like the other sample applications do. So, and one, one nice thing is like, since this has already been implemented by all the official frameworks, you can sort of compare and contrast your implementation with, with, uh, with what is displayed on this page. So you can make sure you're rendering things in the same way. And this brings us to our final command in, in the, the, the parallel commands, and that's start spell. So this is a command I came up with. It really just runs uh, a couple things on its own. So um, at this point, we have, uh, when we've typed JSS start, we've actually run, you know, we have four parallel processes running at this point. Um, so this calls run p, which is shorthand for, uh, from the same npm package just to run things in parallel. And it's called start dev, and it runs a command called auto build. And uh, start dev is really just the development server. You know, this is offline development, so um, in this case, I'm just running node server JS, which is a node server that I, I created. Um, yeah, but this is, you know, in your, in your solution, it, it, could be, it could be anything. Um, I'm also running, running rollup. Um, there's no webpack anywhere to be found in this, in this implementation. Um, so it uses rollup, and I'm passing a watch command, 
and rollup is is giving us some live reload action at the bottom and it's giving us some really nice build times as well so um, yeah so four four processes essentially start when when you when you you know type JSS start um, and node server js this is really where you're going to bring your own development server you know it, it's likely to be the development server that your your client framework ships with uh, Svelte uses um, they suggest in their sample applications to use this framework uh, this client called serve CLI um, but the problem with that is it only serves static files. And if you're doing any client-side routing at all, if you navigate to a new route or something like that, then when you get the live reload action on when you've added, added or changed a component, you're just going to end up on a 404 page. So it wasn't a good fit for me. So that node server JS is just express, and I'm just serving my index.html file. Um, so that was my solution there. But it really could be anything. You know, when I, when I first was start thinking about this application, I was like, I'm going to talk about the web application a ton. You know, it's something I'm going to focus on. But honestly, it just became the tale of, like, how to build a web application. And I think we've, I think we've really all done that. So the one thing I really want to call out is, is routing in the web application. Um, so there are really two types of routes in PsychoJSS. And um, by default, you can change these routes. But by default, there, there's, there's routes that care about language, and there's a route that doesn't. So really, we have you know these two top routes that have some regular expressions in the in the you know patterns in, in the um, you know the language variable, so we can enforce those constraints. It, um, you know it is it is useful if your routing library can handle those. I had to struggle to find one that that did. I was doing it on my own for a while and parsing those out, but it was it was kind of messy. So basically, you just want a language variable and a, and a, a psycho route from the URL. So. And basically, when a route changes, um, the, the, the flow for this is really probably what you would expect. So you know, if a route has changed in your application, you know, you're going to send a request to layout service with the language and the route that's passed, uh, or the route that you've, you've passed, parsed out of the, the URL. You're going to gather that JSON response. And then you're going to re-render your application client side. You know, you're not going to have a full page reload. You're just making JSON requests to that layout service. Cool. And this is, you know, I was pretty excited to get this far. You know, this is really ugly, but, you know, I, I tweeted this out and I was, I was thrilled. I had disconnected layout service running and I had my placeholders working and it was, it was pretty cool. I actually recorded myself tweeting it out. Um, so that's a live, live look at me tweeting it out. Uh, I, was pretty, I was pretty happy with it. You know, I, I wasn't expecting to make it that far.